رسول الله حبيب الله رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest and all in glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best to religion to them Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Dear viewers welcome to another live edition of your program Gardens of the Pious By the grace of Allah today's episode is number 228 in the blessed series may Allah accept from all of us Um In today's episode, we're going to begin a new chapter, chapter number 55, which is known as Fadlu Zuhdi Fid Dunya, the virtues of leading an ascetic life, and also the virtues of living a simple life. In the beginning of the chapter, Al-Imam Al-Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him, listed seven references from various chapters of the Qur'an. From Surah Yunus, from Surah Al-Kahf, from Surah Al-Hadid, verse number 20, from Surah Al-Imran, from Surah Fatir, from Surah Al-Takathur, and from Surah Al-Ankabut. When we examine these verses, we will find out that these ayat are inviting people Uh, uh, we're talking here about the believers who take heed, who respond to the call of Allah the Almighty, inviting them to pay attention to the reality of this life and to give precedence to what is more important and to perceive life as it should be, as a transient uh, station, as um, a place where you seek your provision, then you move to another one. so that you move to an eternal life. And this is not an eternal life. When the person perceives his life like that, he is a true believer. And he is a smart person. He realizes the purpose of his creation. And he knows exactly why is he being here, and what he needs to do, and how to take advantage of his presence in this life. What is the best way to live his or her life while being on earth, in order to benefit out of his life towards his or hereafter. The first verse, without uh, any further ado, or the first Quranic reference is of Surah Yunus, uh, number 24. And um, um, I'm a big fan of Sheikh Sa'ad Al-Ghamidi. I like his recitation. I feel that he is one of those who recite by their hearts, not only by their tongues. So I requested the brothers to... Um, play his beautiful recitation of this ayah, then insha'Allah will comment on it. إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ مِمَّا يَأْكُلُ النَّاسُ وَالْأَنْعَامِ حتى إذا أخذت الأرض زخرفها وزينت وظن أهلها أنهم قادرون عليها أتاها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا فجعلناها حصيدا كأن لم تغن بالأمس كذلك نفصل الآيات لقوم يتفكرون ما شاء الله So in this ayah Allah the Almighty gives us an example to show us the reality of life And life uh, in Arabic is known as الدنيا And this name was not chosen haphazardly So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it الحياة الدنيا Haya because we live in it, 
So there is some sort of life. Um, there is mortality, no doubt. It should be transient, no doubt. But we're living in it. And at dunya, it was called dunya because it is inferior. Inferior to what? Inferior to the hereafter. Allah the Almighty says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى And indeed, the hereafter is better for you than al-ula, than this dunya, because it's lowly, it is insignificant, it is servile. Dunya, low, while al-akhirah is superior. In the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, لَمَوْضِعُ سَوْطِ أَحَدِكُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا فِي الْجَنَّةِ خَيْرٌ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَّا فِيهَا A salt is the web which if a traveler or somebody is riding on the back of his camel or horse, they normally use to lead their rides, to direct their camels, their cattle. So it's, a, it's like a stick. A place which may be occupied by a stick in paradise is better and superior to the entire dunya, the worldly life, and all what it contains. All the wealth and all the properties that exist in this dunya, in our worldly life, is nothing compared to a position of a stick or a whip in paradise. Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَوْ كَانَتِ الدُّنْيَا تَعْدِلُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ جَنَاحَ بَعُوضَ مَا سَقَى كَافِرًا مِنْهَا شَرْبَةَ مَا If the life of this world had any significance before Allah the Almighty, if it was even worth the wing of a fly, a wing of a fly, Allah wouldn't have been given a non-believer a sip of drink, a sip of water out of it. That if life meant anything to Allah, like any significance. But this life is nothing but a test. And that's why He provides for everyone for the good and the bad, for the believers and the wicked. It doesn't matter because it's a test. So let them eat, let them drink, let them enjoy, and reckoning will begin soon after they die. So in this ayah, for example, 24 of Surah Yunus, Allah the Almighty says, the example of this life is but rain which has sent down from the heaven that the plants of the earth absorb. That is the meaning of فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ So the plants of the earth absorb this water. From which men and livestock eat. As they grow the fruits and the vegetations, we eat and the livestock eat. Until when the earth has taken uh, on its adornment and it is purified and its people think, assume, they have power over it. They are capable over it. There comes to it our command by night or by day, and we make it as a harvest, as if it had not flourished yesterday. Thus, do we explain in detail the signs for people who give thought. So this ayah is inviting the believers and those who yatafakkaroon, those who give thought, those who ponder, to reflect on the reality of this life through this example. Something that we all see, even if you're living in the city, you know, eventually we all travel. Uh, if you're in a train, if you're traveling by car, and you're going through the fields, and you're seeing the lands when it is dry, then the farmers sow their seeds, then the rain falls on it. So the seeds sprout. And they start growing, and it becomes full of greenery, beautiful fruits or vegetations, beautiful trees. What is the meaning of ظن أهلها? It's people, those who own it, suppose that they are capable over it. They have power over it. This is when the farmers, for instance, according to this example, see the field, it has turned into greenery, and they think it's a matter of a day or two that we're going to harvest 
the fruits or harvest the vegetations. We sell it, we make money out of that. Then ataha amruna. So Allah the Almighty sends a calamity to devour all of that. For instance, an extreme cold weather or an extreme hot weather. فَجَعَلْنَاهَا حَصِيدًا So our command comes to it by night or by day at any time. And we make it as a harvest. They did not harvest it yet. But it will be entirely ruined. After its owners and its people thought that they have full power over it. Maybe they struck some deals to sell the fruits or the vegetations. And they have taken some down payment. And it's only a matter of a few hours. Would the trucks would come in order to pick up the fruits or the vegetables so that they can collect the remaining payment. But it has been all ruined. It's in your property. It's in your possession. But you have no control over it. You cannot protect because you cannot protect your own self. And when Allah the Almighty says, Ataha amruna laylan aw nahara by night or by day. فَجَعَنَّاهَا حَصِيدًا كَأَنْ لَمْ تَغْنَ بِالْأَمْسِ Those who look at it after the field which was green yesterday, now it has been ruined. It was burned to ground. فَجَعَنَّاهَا حَصِيدًا كَأَنْ لَمْ تَغْنَ بِالْأَمْسِ As if it did not exist yesterday. If you take pictures, if you take a nice video of the greenery of the field today, then you see it tomorrow. There is no comparison, no way. I may have missed the address. This is not my garden. This is not my property. This is life. This is exactly life. Let me give you a couple of examples to show you what Allah the Almighty meant by that. Obviously, you understand the meaning of the ayah. But what I mean here is, sometimes when you have an experience and you want to share it with people, it may make it simpler for people to understand this parable. Um, in Texas once, there was a warning of a great hurricane. They say grade four, whatever. It was uh, first Rita, then Katrina. Then there was a mandatory evacuation. So we had to leave. Some of our friends and community members, their houses were worth of millions of dollars. Millions. Uh, some of them had five, six cars, big cars. Big trucks, expensive Mercedes, uh, fancy luxurious sport cars. But we're not going for a field trip. We're not going for a vacation. We're trying to rescue our lives. So each family got together in one truck, in a big SUV or in a minivan. They put themselves together in it. And they left this very expensive house. They left the fancy rugs. They left the chandelier. They left their comfortable beds. And we were stuck on the same highway for hundreds of miles, literally bumper to bumper. People are fleeing. This is our city. This is our home. This is where we enjoy our life. This is where we brag about our positions. You visit any of them, you see, mashallah, the house is very fancy. And in front of the house, five, six very expensive, luxurious cars. But all of that, you leave it behind in order to save your life. Priority. Priority is to save your life. So they abandon everything. They put the shutters and they ran off. On the highway, you find congressmen, you find big doctors, some, doc some of these doctors are our colleagues. In order to book an appointment, it may take you a couple months. Some doctors were booked for six months in advance. Yeah. But there is no job now. Whether you're a doctor or you're a patient, we're all stuck on the same highway. And when we stand in line for the gas on a gas station, all of us are equal. All of us are suffering the same. When you go to pick up some water, there is no water. Bread, there is no bread. This is life. So if you have all the money in the world, if you have the most expensive house, but you live in it, why? Because you want to save your life. I didn't come across of any person who decided I ain't leaving my house. No way that I'm going to leave my comfortable bed. I'm going to stay here. 
because they say there is a risk that everything may be demolished. This is life. Life is like a dream. Yes, it is like a dream. You know, when we sleep, then we are in deep sleep and we experience some dreams. Sometimes you get up and say, I had a beautiful dream. It was so nice. And you keep narrating, but it's nothing but a dream. Yesterday we had a, a caller who said that uh, after praying istikhara, I saw myself getting married and in the wedding and all of that. But he was still in his bed. He was still having some issues with his wife. But it's a dream. Life is similar to a dream. And soon you will get up from your sleep. النَّاسُ نِيَامٌ فَإِذَا مَاتُوا انْتَبَهُوا People in this life are like sleepy ones. They are asleep. And when they die, it is similar to getting up from your sleep and from your dream. You come to the reality. You come to confront the reality which is, hey, this life was very insignificant. This life was nothing. It was, it was a test. It's glitter, it's greenery. It was just a test. The second example I wanted to share with you is, I joined some people a few times, uh, with the intention of buying a house, they wanted to buy a house. So we visited, the broker took us to a few houses, mashallah, beautiful houses, very beautiful houses. So why are they selling this house? You know why its people do not live in it? Is it possible that they have a better house? No, in fact, so the broker would say, or the landlord, or the person who owns the house, like different occasions. Well, basically the family father, who was a doctor, who was a business owner, who was whatever, um, built this house, made this beautiful garden which cost thousands and thousands. And he even made for each one of his sons a flat. And he made certain to make a nice canopy on the roof and all of that. Then what happened? I heard that several times. Well, right before they moved in, the man died. The man died, so he spent his life saving, he's been working hard throughout his entire life in order to build this house, and he did not enjoy living in it for a single day. Yeah, it happens. I have seen that several times. So it taught me that the dunya should not possess my heart. I may possess it in my hand, but it should not occupy a single inch, a single millimeter even, of my heart. Because... She should, the dunya shouldn't own you. Shouldn't own you. You may own it, that's okay. Many of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ were wealthy. But that wealth, that luxurious life did not possess them. Did not control their decision. Did not slow them down from fulfilling their duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When somebody doesn't attend the Friday prayer. Because during this time, he has some cases to check on. In each case, the patient, whether he pays cash or his uh, medical insurance, uh, wires the money to the clinic, they pay approximately $600. So if I go to pray Jumu'ah during this time, I'm going to waste easy an hour and a half out of my time, maybe a couple hours, I could make like a couple thousand during this time. I would rather continue. And a shaitan will make it seem fair to you by saying, this is also fi sabilillah. I'm helping people. I'm treating sick people. No, you're not doing this for the sake of Allah. You know what you're doing this for. You know, you calculated, you did the math. And you thought that if you were to go to attend the Jumu'ah, you're going to miss, not necessarily lose, because the patients are there. And they're waiting for you. And Allah the Almighty is waiting for you to fulfill His, to answer His invitation and to fulfill His command. Ya ayuha ladina amanu, idha nudiya lis salati min yawmi al-jumu'ati fas'aw ila dhikri Allahi wa daru al-bay'a. Thalikum khayrun lakum in kuntum ta'lamun. Khayr means better. Remember what I said in the beginning when I defined a dunya lowly? Servile, inferior, insignificant, 
Khairi means the opposite, better, superior, greater. So Allah the Almighty says, when you hear the call to Friday prayer, fasahaw ila dhikrillah. Respond to that call by rushing to accept the invitation, to answer the da'wah, to hear the remembrance of Allah. Leave alone business, transaction, uh, money making, selling and buying. All of that it should be suspended. You should stop all of that. Shut down your stores, close your clinics, so that you can attend the Friday prayer. Then Allah the Almighty said, ذلك. That is better for you. Which is better? Yeah, leaving your business. So that you can attend the Friday prayer is better for you. If you were to know. You see, if you were to know. So those who planted, who, who sowed the seeds, and uh, they saw the fruits growing before their very eyes, and they thought they have full power over it. Like exactly in Surah Al-Qalam. Ashabul Jannah, the people who their father was a very generous man. So uh, every time he will collect the harvest, will divide it into three portions. And then he will donate one third of the produce, fi sabilillah. Then one third, he will reinvest it in the garden and will keep for himself and his family members one third, which was plenty. And they were living a very happy life. When the father died, the son thought, our father was foolish. We're not going to do like him. So what are you going to do? We're not giving the poor anything. One third. 3.3% or 33.3% to the poor. Why? We should rather keep it for ourselves. It will make us richer. It will make us live a better life. Look at the catch. Surah Al-Qalam. They said, they swore to Allah that they will harvest the garden early morning before people will get up so that the poor would not gather to get the rights as they used to during their father's life. Al-Istisna here means to say, Insha'Allah. They didn't even say, Insha'Allah. Why didn't they? They said, because the garden is ours. We have full power over it. We're going to harvest the fruits. And nothing, no one can stop us. فَأَصْبَحَتْ كَالصَّرِيمِ So before they got up in the morning to go to the gardens, it was all ruined. Like there was no fruits whatsoever in this land. Like it has been always a sterile, infertile soil, subhanAllah. When they reached there, they thought they have missed the address. Did you come to a wrong place? No. This is your garden. That Allah the Almighty punished you. That is the meaning of And its people thought that they have a capability over it. Then there comes to it our command by night or by day and we make it as a harvest as if it had not flourished yesterday. Subhanallah. كَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Thus we explain our ayat, our signs, our verses for people who have thoughts. In my life, I have seen many of these examples and I have seen the opposite. I have seen very rich people who have uh, lived an ascetic life. Yes. Recently, one of these multi-billionaires, not millionaires, MashaAllah, laqata illa billah, who used to attend our halqa, and he wouldn't appear as if he is better than anyone. Of course, if you were to go to his house and see what kind of car he's uh, riding and how many people are working for him, thousands of people were working for him, thousands. One of them once said that, Sheikh, I have over 2,000 people my employees, over 2,000 people, I would like for you to come and give them some lessons and teach them, inspire them. Over 2,000 people working for one person. For his partner too, or another person who used to attend our halqa, had a big number of workers. And this guy was very humble, living a very ascetic life, despite his extreme wealth. To the point that, or the reason of his success, 
financial success and also I hope inshallah he is now between Allah's hands he passed away a couple months ago and I hope and I pray as millions of people have been praying for him that may Allah take him straight to heaven in his funeral brothers and sisters there was over one million people following his funeral waves sea and ocean of people subhanallah why what did this person do so that people loved him so much this person was no president, was no governor of any city or any state, was not a mayor, an ordinary person. When he started his business, a very small business, with a few youth who just graduated, they decided each one will invest that much and the profit will be shared according to their percentage of their participation or investment. Then he suggested that this is your share 10 percent, this is 20 percent, this is whatever. There were nine people, each one 10 percent. Then they said the tenth is the share of Allah, 10 percent. They said, what do you mean? They said that every business we make, every profit that we generate, 10 percent out of that should be given for the sake of Allah and its charity. Well, since the business was kind of small in the beginning, the partners did not mind. They were used and they said, why not? And this 10% which they appointed as the share of Allah so that they will give it. Fi sabilillah, you understand that Allah the Almighty says, La yanal Allah luhumuha wa la dimauha wa la ki yanaluhu taqwa minkum. Allah will not get any of the share for himself. When we slaughter our sacrifice, Allah doesn't take a piece of meat or anything out of it. We say, fi sabilillah, for Allah, because He ordered us to pass it on to the poor. So He said that He will accept it in His own right hand, so that He will reward for it. He magnificent reward, as you all know. So their business prospered, more than any other business. So they decided, since this is the case, they never lost any business. Even when business of other people has been affected, and there is a recession, their business continued booming. So they increased the rate, the percentage, the share of Allah, 20%. Then 30%. Then 50%. Yeah. It's easy to say so, but it is not easy when you earn, when you sell a house, and your profit is like a million dollars. Who's got the guts to say 500 out of that? Fi sabilillah. How many people? How many people? have the power to overcome the desire of position and say this is fi sabillah. Those are the people whom we say that Allah has put the dunya in their hand and beneath their feet. It doesn't occupy any space in their hearts. It doesn't occupy any space in this heart. I don't have an access to see the, to see the screen, but if the brothers have um, hopefully uh, the picture of our brother who passed away and also some pictures or images of his funeral, I would appreciate that. I don't have an access to see it in front of me. So I don't know if you can see that or not. Very ordinary person. Most people did not know him, but after his death. Thousands of families were on the payroll of his welfare that he used to support them financially on monthly basis, thousands and thousands of people, built thousands of masajid, Islamic school, Quranic schools, and all of that, working in the hidden. Whenever he used to sit with us in the halqa, it was not easy to distinguish this person from others. Who is he? This is a kind of life that we're talking about, the virtues of living an ascetic life, so that wealth would not make you feel superior or better than others, rather like everybody else. You possess wealth, no problem. Because a lot of people confuse the issues. They think that a zuhd in, uh, in Islam is to wear uh, clothes full of patches and uh, to live a miserable life and to cannot find anything to eat, not being able to buy the medication. No, this is not the case. A person may be extremely poor, but even though with his poverty, Allah doesn't like him. 
because he's always condemning his wife, he's always complaining, he's impatient, and he's not grateful. If anyone were to give him something, he doesn't appreciate that. And he's envious, he's always envying others. They have better than me. This is condemned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِذْهَدْ فِي مَا فِي يَدِ النَّاسِ يُحِبُّكَ النَّاسِ When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about an act that if I do, Allah will love me and people will love me. You know, he wants both dunya and hereafter. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a zuhd here is to live an ascetic life. إِذْهَدْ فِي الدُّنْيَا يُحِبُّكَ اللَّهِ Live an ascetic life, Allah would love you. وَزْهَدْ فِي مَا فِي يَدِ النَّاسِ Lose interest in what is in people's hands and positions. Do not always desire to have what they have. Do not keep comparing yourself to them. Do not make them feel like you are in need for them. They would love you. So long as you show, you do not show any interest in their positions, they will like you. So, إِزْهَدْ فِي الدُّنْيَا يُحِبُّكَ اللَّهِ وَزْهَدْ فِي مَا فِي يَدِ النَّاسِ يُحِبُّكَ النَّاسِ Let's take a short break before... We tackle the following ayah. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk on your favorite channel, Huda TV. I'm your host, Arkham Rashid. They actually did uh, such and such that you're accusing him of in your mind. Uh, so now I want to start off with my right hand side, uh, Brother Ahmed. If you can just tell us what your thoughts were on that video, what can you extract from that video? Would you say some of the youth uh, turn to drugs, especially you know in your country, if if they don't have jobs or you know it's because they want to get away from their daily normal lives would you say that's okay, a reason absolutely that? that's true some yes. people just resort to drug as the last option because they, they get themselves straight out and they're instead of depression but they don't know where to turn for help sports per se is like a, a communal social activity whereas mm -hmm. it, you know, it collects the community together and it, it bonds brotherhoods together you know mm -hmm. it's it's very social in its aspect where you interact with you know, your teammates or your players in a team. So I think um, a message would be just to stay completely away, away from, from it. it. Even we can say, oh look, it's haram. strives to remain the premier English language Islamic channel in the world and to do so we need your input send us your thoughts suggestions and feedback through email at feedback at hoda.tv Hoda TV is committed to helping others so why not help Hoda TV share the message of Islam worldwide take part in helping spread the authentic message of Islam based on the Quran and the Sunnah throughout the world by sponsoring Hoda TV don't miss this unique opportunity to gain the reward from Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Our phone numbers beginning with area code are 0020235131 and the email address is guardians at wuda.tv. There is an alternative number which ends up with 132 as well. The following reference is of Surah Al Kaf, uh, two consecutive verses 45 and 46. Allah the Almighty says in these two verses, وَاضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ فَأَصْبَحَ هَشِيمًا 
فأصبح هشيما تذروه الرياح وكان الله على كل شيء مقتدرا المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير املا and the meaning of these two verses that Allah the Almighty says and give them an example of the life of this world it is like the rain which we send down from the sky and the vegetations of the earth mingles with it and it becomes fresh and green but later it becomes dry and broken pieces which the winds scatter and Allah is able to do all things then in the following ayah 46 it means wealth and children are the adornment of the life of this world yes indeed but <clears throat> look at this comparison the good righteous deeds that last are better with your Lord for reward and better in respect of hope. So here Allah the Almighty is confirming the fact that wealth, any kind of wealth, properties, homes, cars, gold and silver, factories, cash, this is all wealth, and sons and children, this is the glitter, this is the adornment, of the life of this world. Better than all of that, better than the wealth, the children, is al-baqiyat, al-salihat. Allah described these deeds or these acts as baqiyat, plural of baqiyah. From al-baqa, which means remaining. Uh, remember, in Surah Al-Rahman, Allah the Almighty says, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَان وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ يَبْقَى means remains. بَاقِيَاتْ The deeds which remain. Everything in this life will vanish except our actions. Would remain, whether good or bad. But Allah the Almighty did not say any remaining acts. الْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ The good righteous deeds which last خَيْرٌ Better. خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا they are better before your Lord with regards to their word. وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا And better with regards to hope. So that Allah the Almighty, via the virtues of one's good deeds, will admit him or her to paradise and will grant them forgiveness. الباقيات الصالحات Many of the interpreters of the Quran refer to them as those are specific adhkar. Subhanallah. والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله These words are better than the entire world and what it contains الباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا And others said it is more general than limiting them to these words يعني anything you do the five daily prayers Fasting voluntary or during Ramadan, assisting the poor and the needy, saying a good thing, enjoining what is good, forbidding what is evil, uh, being dutiful to your parents. Any good deed you do is better than the whole dunya and what it contains. Why? In a hadith that we will be studying in this chapter, the Prophet ﷺ says whenever anyone dies, then his family will take him to the grave <coughs> and they will remain to divide his wealth afterward. Only one thing will be buried with him in the grave. Al-Baqiyat, Al-Salihat, or otherwise, which is his actions. The only thing which will remain for you is your actions, not your wealth. So the wealth could be used, could be utilized to be constructive towards the hereafter, to build a bright future for you, and it could be otherwise. It is your call and it is your decision. The following ayah is another beautiful ayah, is of Surah Al-Hadid. <coughs> ayah number 20, in which Allah the Almighty confirms the same meaning by saying, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim, 
اعلموا انما الحياه الدنيا لعب ولهو وزينه وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر وتكاثر في الاموال والاولاد كمثل غيث اعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور Know that the life of this world is only play and amusement, pump, and mutual boasting among you and competition in respect of wealth and children as the likeness of vegetation after rain thereof the growth of pleasing the growth is pleasing to the tiller and afterwards it dries up and you see it turning yellow then it becomes straw but in the hereafter there is a severe torment for the non-believers and for the wicked and there is also forgiveness from Allah and a good pleasure from him for the believers and the good doers whereas the life of this world is only a deceiving enjoyment well the ayah is very clear explaining itself but I like to shed some light on the last segment of the ayah وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ Repeatedly Allah the Almighty provided us with this meaning. The life of this world is nothing but a deceiving enjoyment. Why is that? What is Allah, uh, what Allah is trying to warn us against is, He doesn't want any one of us to imagine at any moment, at any time that he is immortal. And his wealth would remain forever for him. Or he would remain wealthy forever. Or he would live forever to enjoy his wealth non-stop. No, this is not true. After the uh, recession and the mortgage crisis, and when the stock market crashed a couple years ago, the CNN was showing a report of some millionaires who've lost everything, who've lost their houses. And one of them, whom I spoke about before, he lost his business, and meanwhile he lost his health insurance, and uh, he was afflicted with cancer. And he kept spending the remaining amount of money with him for the treatment, until he ended up selling his house selling his car then some friends give him a car and the report was showing this man and his wife living in the car in a very humble car living in it because they don't have a place to go to and another person I saw him in the report who was approaching 90 years old and he had to go to work for Walmart to distribute flyers. When people lost their wealth and their retirement plan, whether in the stock market or in the real estate market or whatever, um, for many people life has ended. And that's why, according to the report, there was a rise amongst uh, in, uh, in, in, in the percentage of those who took their lives, who committed suicide, 20 per, 25% amongst millionaires. Because when they lost their wealth, they thought life is not worth it anymore. Why shall I live it? And they couldn't face their children. They couldn't face their friends. They couldn't, they couldn't go to the country club. They couldn't show off with their car key. 
They couldn't brag about their positions. They couldn't spend the fancy nights in fancy places as they used to do. So they decided to take their lives. They shot themselves. 25% rise in amongst the millionaires of those who committed suicide. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned five items here in this ayah. He said, the life of this world is only la'ib, walah, wazina, wa tafakhur, wa takathur fi al-amwal wal awlad. Hmm. The life of this world is only play, amusement, pump, boasting, competition in respect of wealth and children. This is it. And by the end he said, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ The life of this world is only a deceiving enjoyment. By the time you think that you got it all, maybe the person is diagnosed with a fatal disease. By the time he prepares for a nice vacation in the Bahamas, he loses his life. Or his partner loses her life. Or his life. Whatever. So one has to be prepared for the reality, which is, in this life, we live a very humble life. Humbleness in the heart, not in, 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 in the way that you live at home, in the kind of food you eat only. It's rather also in the hearts. That is what is most important. And to be prepared for the following fact. If anything happens in this life, no big deal, because I didn't lose much. إِنَّمَا تَقْضِي هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا When the sorcerers whom the Pharaoh tried, he actually recruited them in order to defeat Moses in public so that people would know that Moses was nothing but a sorcerer. And look here, the magicians defeated him. So when they threw their sticks and they were boasting about their effort, showing off, then Musa was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to throw his single stick. فَأَلْقَاهَا فَإِذَا هِيَ حَيَّةٌ تَسْعَى When he threw his stick and he became a humongous snake, تَلْقَفُ مَا يَأْفِكُونَ Devouring all their false sorcery work and their magical spells, devouring literally all their sticks, which people يُخَيَّلُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ سِحْرِهِمْ أَنَّهَا تَسْعَى Even Musa السلام, thought that those sticks of theirs have become real snakes. So Allah the Almighty made the truth prevail. When the sorcerers who made this magic saw the real work of Moses and his stick turning into a real stick, a real snake, they knew that this guy is not a faker. This guy is a true prophet. So they all prostrated themselves and they followed Musa السلام, in public. So the Pharaoh threatened them. لا أصلب أنكم في جذوع النخل. I'm going to crucify you against the trunks of the dead palm trees. I'm going to chop off their hand, your hands and feet from cross. I'm going to do this and this that to you. They said what? فقض ما أنت قاض إنما تقضي هذه الحياة الدنيا. We don't care. Do as you wish. You wanna crucify us? Do it. You wanna cut our hands and feet? Do it. Whatever you decide, whatever you achieve is only concerning al hayat al dunya. We don't care the least. Now we have believed in Allah. Inna amanna bi Rabbina liyaghfir lana khatayana wa ma akrahtana alayhi min al sihr. Wallahu khayrun wa abqa. Look, even if you kill us, we don't care. Now we have believed in our Lord and we hope that He will forgive us our sins. And will forgive us sorcery which you force us to practice. And indeed Allah is better and everlasting. And what Allah has for us is better and everlasting. So they did not mind in a split of a second. When they saw what Musa did, then they believed in him. They didn't have to follow Musa for years in order to come to this level. They realized this is a reality. So... Our life will be sacrificed for our belief. We don't care. إنما تقضي هذه الحياة الدنيا. Then they said by the end, والله خير وأقى الله. And what Allah has for us is better and everlasting. أقى. 
And Allah the Almighty said to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Surah Al-Duha, وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَلَا الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى And indeed the hereafter is better for you than this life. That is the meaning of وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ And the life of this world is nothing but a deceiving enjoyment because no one can maintain this enjoyment forever. Not only that, no one knows for how long this enjoyment would last with him or with her. You live in the moment. Right now you're very happy, you're very delighted. Your son just graduated from a medical school with an honor grade. You're thinking about buying a nice clinic for him after he finishes his residency. You're thinking about getting him a nice bride. You're thinking about all of that. He's crossing the street, he got killed in a car accident, it's over. All your dreams, you got up from your dream. In a case of a believer, whatever happens, it happens by the will and the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if good happens to him, he is thankful and grateful to Allah. And if bad has afflicted him, he is patient. And that too is good for him. And no one behaves like that, but a true believer. May Allah make us among them. Brothers and sisters, we run out of time for this episode. Until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. I say this word and I ask for Allah to you. And I say Allah to you, O Prophet Muhammad, and to his and 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 is to be the best and give his best religion to them. Allah our God is the greatest, the one and only glory to him. He born in humans to be the best and give his best religion to them. So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about it in paradise. Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price Rasulallah